We're always in our clubhouse getting high. Super fuckers. Everybody wishes we would die. Super fuckers. Here we come. Like a bomb. Everybody fucking run and hide. Yeah, okay, it's recording. So what are you guys doing? <laughs> I um I revealed Ka from the Jungle Book to Stev, and he is having the time of his fucking life. <laughs> who else? Who else is involved in these pictures? Explain what Ka is. For those of you who are not aware, Ka is from the Disney movie The Jungle Book. He oh. is most infamous for the scene where he hypnotizes and wraps up Mowgli in his uh, coils. Oh, the snake. Yeah. Yes. Um. This this um 1967 movie has spawned a lot of fetish images. <laughs> and Stev over here has just discovered them <laughs> from a simple Google search. Mm. And one of these, they, they they just took Mogi, just added boobs to a to make it to a girl. Mm. <laughs> and there's Christopher Robin, the dog from All Dogs Go to Heaven, Charlie. I'm so disappointed in myself. <laughs> there's a Tasmanian devil. It is a full equal fetish, you know, no no genders, no characters, animals all like. And it's a fetish and right. I am ashamed of Disney. <laughs> I am ashamed of everyone involved. And most importantly, <laughs> I'm ashamed that I have to explain this to everybody. So welcome to the Rebel Taxi Pizza Party podcast. I'm Pan Pizza, who are you people? I'm going to fucking kill myself. It's the 50th Pizza Party podcast. Oh. oh yeah, it is. Oh my Shit. god, we didn't really? plan anything. Crap, I was gonna get some, maybe I should, maybe next time I'll have some guests over. But here right now, just a basic episode because we didn't plan anything. We're just looking at fetish art of the Jungle Book. We should it's, just we should just do you should just cut in clips like the best memories. Yeah, <laughs> we'll that, just do that would require me to listen through old episodes. So no, oh, could yeah, have done like good. a fan thing. You know, let the fans do all the work for you. Whoops, too late. <laughs> yeah. I always love those, like, because um, all those contests are like, "Hey, pick out your favorite moments." It's always, it's always letting the fans do the work for them. Um, p- people in the comments, what's your favorite fan? What's your favorite moment in the Pizza Party podcast after fifty episodes? Um, <laughs> Who's uh, your favorite fan? Me. I, I, I kind of had a pause there, like I was expecting someone to respond. <laughs> this is pre-recorded. <laughs> Whoops. Well, well, now they can, if they're listening at home, they can just shout it out. It's like Dora the Explorer. We just have a pause and they can, like, interject themselves into here. Who's the so, most disappointing member of the Pizza Party podcast? Oh. Oh. Did you say Nolan? If you did, you are right. I mean, now with the Pizza I've Party seen. podcast, people can see how I am unscripted and see how cringe I am in real life. You know, you should have made this one a live one. That w- that would have been the big kicker. Just like, here's a live Pizza Party podcast. That would require effort. It's okay, Pan. I still love you. Come here. Oh. I mean, yeah. we're recording this live, so. Uh, hey, yeah. are, are we going to be put on some sort of list or something for looking at these Jungle Book images or what? I mean, I'm not looking at them. It, it's Steph who's looking at them, so I haven't even... You know, yeah, I'm not. I didn't see they're them yet. hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> sure. So funny. That's really there was, funny. <laughs> there was one where they just took a cl- image of the little mermaid and just put the, the hypnotized eyes and then Kai in there. Kai's drowning. Yeah. So, it makes no sense. That's so funny. Yeah, yeah. I like, I like aging up Mabel from Gravity Falls and uh, drawing rule 34 of her. That's really funny. Yeah, ha ha. So funny. <laughs> Uh, that's not creepy at all, you fucking weirdo. I'm disappointed, everyone. <laughs> I mean, out of all the fetish-ish things, this is very innocent. Like, it's... Oh, it, oh there's no such... There's no such thing as an innocent fetish. I mean, but like, in, in comparison, say, like, uh, if, if a kid, wa- like, Googled Kai and this popped up, it, maybe uh, maybe they would have been like, oh, it's just Kai hypnotizing other characters and just move past it. Like, it, it, it's really easy to bat an eyelash on this one I, versus – what's that? I can't fucking believe I'm hearing this with my own ears. I mean, there's <laughs> there's no fetish that's innocent. I mean, maybe the that Russian religion about the girl from uh, – <laughs> res- was it Rescue Dude. Rangers? Yeah, yeah, gadget, the gadget cult. Yeah, that's that, – that one because I haven't – I've yet to find anything creepy and sexual about them, but I'm sure – there's something with that. Is that, that real? I don't. Yes. I can't believe that's yeah. real. That's it's, real. That is real. It's on the internet, so I, I guess it has to be. But 
I just, I just, I... I kind of have an I'm, idea, like, I think maybe if I put my mind to it, I can form a cult and have some creepy followers, you know? You already do have a cult. Well, They're all 14-year-old idiot <laughs> teenagers. I meant, like, an actual religious cult, like, you know, people believing they're yeah. in a cartoon and or something. You, you have some fans that are following you religiously. <laughs> you just wait. I'm going to form an actual legitimate cult. Like, not, not a, you know, you'll see. Or like... Pick a character, an obscure character from a cartoon that they could form a cult around. Mm, yeah, that's a good idea. Or like, like they could pick, um, like Skips from regular show. People should just worship. No, them. no, no, no. Uh, it, it should it, it, similar to Gadget. It should be like the the one off character that was from Tailspin from the two parter. The, the bells ring. There's like this girl that gets tied up like eight times. Like that, I'm pretty sure that was fetish fuel on its own. Damn. But, I forgot what her name is. Fetishes. <laughs> you brought him up. I, I'm I'm filled with regret. <laughs> <laughs> but there's there's this girl that like character that I remember like I thought it was pretty cool and I guess relatively attractive when I was a kid. So but then like I go online and there's like there is already kind of a cult thing going. Like it's just one of those things where people find her really attractive, like Roxanne from a Goofy movie. You know, it's one of those where people have obsessions. I didn't yeah. expect any of this. Oh no! You didn't ask for this to happen. What did you find? Oh no! Put what? this in the description. I just found this, and if I have to see it, you all have to see it. No, I don't want to see it. Oh. Yeah, I'm suffering. Explain what it people? is. It's oh, one no. wrapping up the guys from One Direction. <laughs> one Direction gives me one erection. Son of a bitch! Yeah! <laughs> Please, Kai, look into my eyes when I'm talking to you. I mean, Both since, eyes. since I don't... fucking kick your ass! <laughs> since I don't know who, who these people are, it just looks like five pe like normal guys. So, the next video is either going to be Cell Damage or Top 10 Worst Reboots. I don't know which is going to come out first or in second. Who knows? Worst Reboots. Yeah. Yeah. Animated Reboots. Yeah, so no jam. I'm sorry to spoil that for everyone. No gym it in my ass. But you guys want to get into the news? Okay. This yeah. is CNN. Let's just end it. <laughs> this is CNN. CNN. All right. So news. F is for Family, the Netflix original series that has six episodes. Like, it's a family comedy by comedian Bill Burr. It looked like crap because it looked like it was going to be like another Brickleberry or whatever. But it actually turned out to be really good. You get attached to the characters and there's a subplot going on, kind of like BoJack Horseman. I don't know if it's as good as BoJack Horseman, but you get attached to the characters. Well, mm -hmm. Netflix decided that we're getting season two. How many episodes? I don't know. Oh. Probably should have clicked on that link and you know. See. <laughs> yeah, I probably should have done. You know, actually read the article. Yeah, you know, I I tried. Yeah, so at least six episodes. We don't know if six episodes or more episodes. We'll never know. We'll know when it comes out sometime. I don't know when, but it's coming out eventually someday. It was shockingly good. Yeah, I, I think I introduced it to you. I don't think so. Oh, wait, yes, you did. Yeah, you were talking about what happened on the one episode where the kid sees his parents do something cray-cray. <laughs> and I yeah. was laughing. That was a classic podcast moment. I, I didn't interject a clip, but I don't remember where it was, so, you know. I'm literally setting up clip show moments for you. Yeah, the same. we're not doing a clip show. That's the I, I always hate when I listen to a podcast and it's like, today we're just going to have a clip show of all the best moments. Like, I don't want to listen to that crap. You know what actually we should have done is done a podcast about cartoons who have done clip shows. Oh, yeah. Fuck, that's a good idea, actually. Yeah. Like, like the Simpsons one with Troy McClure for their 138th episode special. <laughs> that was so funny. Like, what a random... Anyway, or the Clerks episode, oh, we, the second episode of yeah. Clerks. That's such a... That's one of the best gags to have your second episode be a clip show. And there weren't even clips from previous episodes because there was only one other previous episode, but it was just made up stuff that never happened. I just... I love the... Oh, man. I, I actually saw that early because I went to a Kevin Smith appearance uh, in my town and uh, they played the Flintstone list segment and I like fell on the floor laughing. I was oh, just so yeah. I was so it was so hilarious. And then when it aired, they they 
don't show it. They just show the cartoon characters reacting to it because it was like too far, I guess. Yeah. Um, and I was like so disappointed because it only aired it only aired two of the cartoons. Like you had to see the other four on DVD or mm-hmm. I don't know how many, but yeah. they only aired it twice. I mean, they I, aired it on ABC, the two episodes, out of order, too, because they did episode four and then episode two, which made no sense. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, because at the uh, – wherever he was, they played just the first two episodes. Mm-hmm. Well, episode four and two, uh, two So because they didn't yeah. air the first first episode until yeah. Adult Swim. Adult Swim aired all six. Yeah. But they – that was after the DVDs, I believe. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. But the – Clerks was a – I need to rewatch that. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's some of my favorite audio commentaries for a DVD. Like, it, mm-hmm. it's pretty much Kevin Smith just saying all the trouble that he went through trying to get this series on the air and just stuff like, yeah, you can't have this. You have to edit this. Like, it's a, you learn a lot from just what kind of TV rules there were when making this show. It's crazy. My yeah, favorite is they kept talking about like the, there's a background of uh, Leonardo Leonardo's building, mm-hmm. and like the art director for the episode just ruined it. Like they, they had like this awesome concept, and when it came back from Korea, it just was not what they wanted, and they just blamed that one guy. And I think they <laughs> curse his name throughout the whole DVD. Really? Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, or That's yeah, I remember it, they kept having to send emails to the animation studio because they wouldn't understand certain things. So you have to re. They'd have to have them draw something else, mm-hmm. something. I don't know. It's been a while since I've heard it, but that was a good show. Mm-hmm, yeah. Uh, also, the the behind the scene features, like how they design the characters, is really really good. Because um, unlike other TV shows where they can just make up characters, they're basing them off living people. Yeah. And then uh, every episode comes in animatic form, which is really really awesome. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I remember. Oh, and they um didn't Community do a similar clip episode? Where they do clips of episodes that never happened. Yeah, we did it twice. And edited the it. first yeah. time. Uh, oh, Ed and Eddie did it also. Mm-hmm. I, I know Community did it with um, with the first time was they were to talk about clips and then it was just adventures we never seen. And the second time it was at a psychiatrist and they, the psychiatrist was trying to convince them that the the whole series was inside someone's head. So you got to see old clips, but in from a perspective of them being in a sane asylum. Oh, oh, because oh, they were doing that thing that Buffy the Vampire Slayer did, um, which was actually kind of funny because they did it late in the show's run. Mm-hmm. And then and then they go, they go, they were like, yeah, she, you know, her fantasy world was kind of working. But then suddenly she had a sister like four years in it. Uh, clearly, she's going she's getting worse and worse and like commenting on all the like changes in the show. And it was like actually really funny because they used it as like showing how her. <laughs> Her psychological world was falling apart. It was like very humorous, but it was like a monster of the week made her think that she was in an insane asylum, imagining everything. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. one of my favorite clip show episodes was from the animation Samurai Champloo. It's basically um, the way they did it was they framed it that uh, the two ma- two of the main characters, Mugen and uh, Jean. Oh fuck. What's it? Jing, Jing, thank you so much. Fuck, I need to watch that show again. But anyway, they um the um and the other girl and there uh, there's another character who's a girl and she's a uh, foo and Ooh. she was um in a sp- hot springs. So they decide they find her diary and they're like, oh, let's read it. So while they're um, it's basically a diary that she kept while they've been journeying together. And it's basically it is a clip show, but it just also has like foo's commentary on all in character commentary on all the things happening and then Jin and Mugen reacting to it and like it reuses animation even in the new parts but it's just really funny because the the end payoff is just fucking hilarious um Samurai Champloo is one of my favorite animes that I have not finished yet please go watch it thank you is there any other clip clip shows well I think one of the the first Simpsons clip show I mean like the first half wasn't even a clip show it was a basic episode it was just where I think it was April Fool's and uh Bart decides to get back at Homer by uh, getting a beer can and putting it on this, like, th- those machines that shake paint at the hardware store, you know? Oh, yeah, I remember that. And, like, <laughs> he puts that in the fridge hoping Homer uh, opens it. And when Homer does open it, he, it, there, it just caused the entire Simpsons house to blow up. Like, literally, there's, like, a, a smoke cloud that appears oh, yeah. where their house once was. I just like when he goes, he's like, April Fool. And then, yeah. <laughs> That sounded like an explosion at the old Simpson place. Forget it. That's two blocks away. 
Looks like there's beer coming out of the chimney. I am proceeding on foot, calling a code eight. We need pretzels. Repeat, pretzels. <laughs> and the rest is just Homer in uh, the hospital, and they're just reminiscing on on what happened before. That's more of a traditional sitcom clip show idea. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not the the beer exploding part, but the the just like having a plot, and everyone just has to wait around. They're like, "Hey, remember the time?" And then it would just cut to, and it's usually because somebody has to do on the cast has to do SNL or do a small <laughs> movie. <laughs> I, one of my questions, though, is if you guys had like, OK, Pan, for example, since you have a webcomic, if you had to do um, an episode where you had to like reuse footage and stuff, how would you do it? Uh, well, actually, there's some scenes that do reuse some images like there's a scene in the issue one. Well, the only issue that's out. I'm still working on issue two. But in issue one, uh, Bianca drags Wavebird out of like the uh, Comic-Con area. So we got to get to that panel. And if you notice, I recycled that one image of them running together later when uh, Bianca sees all those Deadpool cosplayers. Mm -hmm. But I just edited in like the the, the t-shirt that Wavebird got (laughs) later. So no one's pointed that out yet. But now I'm just... That would have been a really cool Easter egg every time they like... It like keeps pulling, you know. That's not an Easter egg. That's just being, that's just recycling. You could have made it into an Easter egg. You could, <laughs> well, they, unless I use that in every single episode. Like somewhere, Bianca has to drag Wavebird out of somewhere and just like. At this point, it would be a gag because now that people know you're being lazy, now if you add it back in and people are diehard fans of the podcast, they'll be like, ah, I get it. That's funny. But she's wearing a compl- She's wearing her uh, GameCube outfit. She's not wearing her normal outfit. But just so it'll be just like she just changes outfits whenever I have to use that same scene. Like for no reason, her outfit's completely different. What have we given birth to? What if we <laughs> Look, if it's a joke, it's acceptable, I guess. Maybe I don't know. I, I guess. Yeah. They have that. Uh, most comics don't reuse stuff. They just make them redraw it. Um, and have a perspective on it so they can retcon whatever they use. Or, but then there's the Deadpool comic where he goes back in time and is in an old Spider-Man comic from the 60s and they take Spider-Man out and drop Deadpool in. <laughs> That's like the only Deadpool comic I've ever really loved because it was like so fun. It's such a cool idea to like – they called it Forrest Gumping because <laughs> what they did with the old footage in uh, the movie Forrest Gump. Um, and yeah, there's a whole issue of Deadpool where he goes back in time and they just dr- uh, take you know, draw him over Spider-Man, basically. It's like kind of a cool concept. But uh, then he, as he goes through time, the art style changes based on the time period. So he'll be Rob Liefeld, Deadpool in the 90s. He'll be 70s art in the or John Byrne in the 70s. It was like it was like a really cool concept. I wish they would if they do that in the movies, I think that would be a cool idea like have different directors based on the different decades. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I, I was going to say it's not that's not entirely true that comic book people don't recycle because I have a ton of Archie Sonic comics and I can, <laughs> I can guarantee you that they recycle in those. Well, OK, sorry. I just know most of the time they do use it as a reason to retcon something. To be like, oh, no, remember when this happened? And then suddenly you're reading it and you're like, wait, what? That didn't. I have the issue right here. What are you talking about? I can't think of an example right so now. So do they literally just make up events to fit the story? Like and say, this was in this issue, and then it's not, and you're like, what the fuck? It's usually just details about it and stuff. Unless they do a full, like, reboot, like the New 52 type thing or something like that. But, like, they've retconned things later on where they go, remember when this happened? And you're like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> that didn't happen that way. And, like, they've done that. They do that a lot. But these characters go on for way too long. I mean, it's kind of the problem with comics is, like, you know, yeah. 50 years later – some of that stuff is either inappropriate or doesn't match storytelling or you've kind of made it something you did before irrelevant or, you know, all sorts of nonsense like yeah. that. So, I mean, I think back to what Stan Lee said, and he said that every comic is somebody's first comic, so it's best to try doing something self-contained sometimes. No, I, I, I think that's true. Same with a lot of TV shows. It's funny that he would say that since Marvel's known for being like the exact opposite. I mean, uh, well, he's not exactly in charge of all of Marvel. I mean, I know Stanley well, has he... other projects outside of Marvel. Like, I know he has a bunch of superheroes like Stripperella that he made but are not part of the Marvel universe. 
I mean, he hasn't worked at the company since I think for like, I don't know, probably like the late nineties, but I'm just saying, cause he was like the forefather or well, the guy who ran it really, I think the artist did most of the work from my understanding. Mm -hmm. Um, he just came up with names he probably, you know, honestly, knowing what we know about him, I bet he didn't even come up with those. Oh. Oh, well. But because Jack Kirby came up with most of the Fantastic Four stuff and Steve Ditko with Spider-Man. So it's like, you know, he he took a lot of credit from people. But he is he is he is the guy who um, helped make that company what it was at the very least. So, you know, mm-hmm. so um, thank you, Stanley, but also fuck you. Well, he's he there was a good article in vulture like a month ago just about how when you're a kid stanley's the greatest and then someone tells you the story of jack kirby and you're like oh what the hell and you like feel really sad because you're like don't believe the propaganda true believers but it's like he also (laughs) he also he also promoted comics on talk shows and did a lot for the medium more than anyone ever has so I think it's like it's kind of complicated where it's like, yeah, he has done a lot of messed up stuff, but he also um, he's also helped the medium out tremendously and has been the godfather for it for pretty much most of its history. So I, I don't know. I don't want to throw him under the bus because I actually if he died, I'd be really upset mm-hmm. to be honest. He's just so, been what like, so what you're saying is we have to kill Stanley. <laughs> I don't know. To upset me? No. I just I just think he <laughs> Alright everybody, it's time. If you see Stanley in the street, push him over. He's old and frail. He's really paranoid that. that like we're gonna upload this podcast and he's gonna die by the time we yeah. upload this. <laughs> that would be so funny. <laughs> no. I, I don't think he's he's a, a bad person. I just think he should admit what his role really was and be honest about it. I think that's always been his biggest problem. Because even he was on a talk show, uh, I think it was the Jonathan Ross show, maybe. Um, I'm not exactly sure which talk show. But they, like, got in his face about, like, you know, how much, who created Spider-Man, who created this. And he, like, would just acted like he did everything. And I think he should just, there's, that's such a big turning point in comics and who gets credit for what and all this stuff. That if he had just admitted and came clean about the whole thing, I think it would be tremendously therapeutic for, like, a lot of people. But yeah, no, he I doesn't. I totally agree with you, but on the same token, I'm kind of that pessimistic type of person who's like, you know, when somebody who like gets all the credit for something and and like they just kind of start like their mindset starts warping and they're like, oh yeah, no, I I, I, I agree. So, like, I feel I feel like he's it's partly he he doesn't re- he doesn't really re- he's also old and probably has Alzheimer's, so he probably yeah. totally forgot everything except that oh my god I'm I'm the best. No, well if you've been doing that for fifty years, I bet he believes that. He did. Or, you know, I just think it's uh, I, I still think he had a little to do with it, but I don't think he had as much to do with it as he thinks as he I'm thinks. Stop he Stanley. Once Excelsior. In- I did nothing wrong. <laughs> I, I, think, I think it'd be more like he instead of him believing he actually created him. I think he thinks that like uh, they wouldn't exist without him. You know, like he's the one that put. Oh, them on, that, that's an interesting at. take on it, too. No, that, 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 that is actually. Yeah. Well, because I, I, mean, I do like I, I'm 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 going to be that guy and say I felt like the same way about certain projects I've been a part of. Like I'm not going to say what or who because some of them are still uh, either not happening right now or have happened and completely blew the fuck up. But yeah, no, it's uh, it's I can definitely see how that mindset would um, warp into I did all the work. Well, it's also he he people believe that for so long. For a lot of fans that it's hard for them. So I've heard some people don't believe Kirby had as much to do with it. And then Kirby, of course, claimed he created Spider-Man, which was not true. Um, so, you know, it's it's a, it's a clusterfuck of understanding what exactly happened, mm-hmm. you know. But the point is, is he took too much. I'm sorry. I like derailed everything. No, it's an interesting conversation. I agree but with it, that. Yeah. But yeah. He, he is he is kind of like. I, I have conflicting feelings about him, but I still kind of love Stanley. It's like really weird. He's a it's like I, guy. Like, he's yeah, very charismatic. He's, he's nine. He's ninety, and he's still like he's still active and like like in the um pop in like the PR um part at least, and he's like um active with fans. So it's like you know he 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 does put an, the effort in. It's not like he just kind of like sits there, takes his paycheck, and just like. Tells everybody to fuck off. Yeah. Or maybe I mean, he kind of does. 
it's the uh, I don't know. He's he doesn't seem to be as big of an asshole as like wasn't Bob Kane. Uh, he I didn't heard create about that. Yeah, yeah. He he took a lot of credit more so than anyone, and he never gets as much shit as Stanley does. Mm. Um, Bob Kane. I don't. I think all Bob Kane created was there's a guy called Batman, and uh, he lives in Gotham. That's it. Damn. He didn't Batman. come up with the origin. Well, what? to be fair, um, Batman was ripped off from like Zorro and stuff, right? N- he w- he was, he was ripped this... off from old serials too, wasn't he? Like, yeah. Well, he's a Superman. Like he's brought to. He was made in the wake of Superman, so he's he's. But they. Uh, He's basically the antithesis of Superman, they though. Stole yeah. ba- they stole Batman from the Mexicans. <laughs> Jesus. It's true. Yeah. Batman's the Elvis of superheroes. I really want to wow. see those um, old... <laughs> I really want to see those old Batman serials, the ones that are, like, really dark. Uh, well, that are supposed to be dark in tone, but obviously they're cheesy because they're from the 40s and 50s. Yeah. Way well, before- the old, you should read the old comics. Those are Those are interesting, how dark, and, like, he murders people and all sorts of shit. No. Yeah, but they brought that back for the new movie, so at least they're staying faithful to the source material. That's that's true. I don't I don't know enough about the Bob Kane. Thing. The outdated I just source know, material. Yeah. That's that's the thing about DC. All their characters come from the late thirties and the, the like the thirties and the forties, and you're like maybe sometimes when I watch their stuff it's like, I don't know if you should have kept this going as long as you kept it going. Like I don't know if it works as well now, but yeah. I guess we're stuck with it, so we'll just yeah. keep this up. Speaking of like old Batman material, though, I really, really want to read Killing Joke. I ordered it, and it's like taking forever to get here. But does that movie have a release date? It um, it's July in July this July. The I think. animated movie, oh. right? Yeah, the animated movie, and it's going to be rated R. Is oh, it yeah. just on demand, or are they doing it's on DVD or... and stuff? Oh, okay. I doubt. Oh God, no! They wouldn't release after Mask of Phantasm. They would never do that again. They did one of them, one of the animated ones. I think it was like Superman Doomsday did a limited thing. Hmm. Yeah, but that was limited. Yeah, but that's no. on, that's on the same scale as like the anime movies that get released nowadays on a limited. Yeah, I, mean, I saw um, out now, Indian, but... like in theaters, and it was in a dinky like little small room for ten people. And they just had this like slightly large screen and it was like, what the fuck is this? I wanted to see this on a theatrical screen. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. Fuck limited showings are yeah. bullshit. Well, it's it's hard to like when I saw Boy and the Beast, nobody was there. I mean, it's like it when they do these limited animation screenings, like unless you're in an art theater and are super kind of like the anime stuff I've noticed, even in New York, like the theater's never full. But if it's like French um, I, it's like always a lot of kids there and stuff. So I'm wondering if that the perception of the different countries changes it or I don't exactly know. But I've just noticed when it's a Japanese animated thing, it's like me and a bunch of nerds who came in from <laughs> New Jersey or something because uh, they're always like, oh, man, it took me two hours to get here. I'm so happy. And you're like, shit. I don't know if I would have done that. But <laughs> kudos, kudos to you. Yeah. So, next bit of news. <laughs> <laughs> I feel okay. like every every podcast, it's like let's get into the news, and then we spend like twenty, thirty minutes on one subject. But I that was fun. I yeah, no, no. I, I like talking about comic books. I think we we'll start getting into them more. But yes, next news. He's not Stan Lee, but an incredibly inaccurate simulation. Kids, please cover your ears. So I called Jack Kirby into my office, and I got to cover a Fantastic Four 73 sitting there, and I said, hey, Jack, you notice anything different about it? And he said, yeah, my name's not on it. And I said, that's because you're fired. Get the f*** out of my office. It was the best Ben Grimm ever drew. Kids always ask me, where did the idea for Mr. Fantastic come from? Two words. My pants. Don't believe me? Ask Koibi's wife. Dead. Catch an all new X Play weeknights at eight only on G Four. So hey, remember that time we said there was an emoji movie, and we were just like, they're not gonna fucking do that. They're just buying the license so no one else can use it. Fuck. Well, they're doing it. 
God damn it! 2017 emoji movie gonna fucking happen. The uh, animated film, and it's gonna take it take place entirely within someone's smartphone. Okay, but can I? Uh, can, I just need to pose like a hypothetical question. Well, not hypothetical. But yeah, it is hypothetical. Can we blame Lego Movie for this? Probably. I feel like this is all Lego Movie's fault. I mean, I don't know. Can I say the? poop emoji and just be done with it is that your review poop emoji like poop what if emoji. everybody what if everybody's review of this movie is just a list of emojis and mm-hmm. mine would be the one that's like sad but there's a gun to its head <laughs> someone's gonna do a review of the emoji movie and all emojis it's gonna be some like newspaper critic who really wants to like make a name for themselves <laughs> but then everyone will just make fun of them oh he won't get on rotten tomatoes now well, that'll be his last Rotten Tomatoes because that'll be his quote. It's just emojis. <laughs> they'll be like, they'll be like, people will click on my review. You guys, you don't even know. <laughs> Everyone somebody, said somebody that, should do an emoji movie review entirely in emojis. Someone. The, it, everyone said the Minnesota Star Ledger was going nowhere. Well, I'll show them. I'll show Steve from journalism school. <laughs> I didn't think they would actually do it, but no, they're doing it. I mean, they're going to have to move on that shit quick because like. They don't want to be like, I feel like sad for Angry Birds because I'm like, wow, you guys like maybe waited too long. Yeah. Because I mean, no one's that ex- I, Kids seem a little excited, but I don't think it's like as big culturally as it was. No. Yeah. I mean, they better get on that. Uh, also, the Minecraft movie, if that's ever going to happen, like they better do it now. I don't uh, Maybe or maybe they shouldn't do it. Maybe they should wait too long and then not do it. That would be preferable. Hey, but hey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ghost in the Shell is actually happening. We're actually gonna. Oh, I would do love this to talk about this. Actually, <laughs> yeah. Do you do you hear about the CG thing? <laughs> oh yeah. God. Okay. Yeah. Well, they, they said it was not. It, one source said it was not true. Others say it was. So, explain what the CG thing is. They basically apparently did tests on Scarlett Johansson or footage of her shot for the Ghost in the Shell movie. To basically do tests to make her look more Asian <laughs> oh. through CG, which is which is something Hollywood hasn't done since like pre World War Two. So they had CG pre World War Two. What? I no, I, do, I, mean, I do think like uh, there is an explanation for it. Not not like a, a defense, obviously, because <laughs> no no way in God I defend that no. or even attempt to. <laughs> but like I can um, at least see wh- why they'd be stupid enough to even try. Yeah. Because, uh, like, um, I saw somebody re- um, reposted it. It was um, one of Paleo's friends. He reposted this video by Max Landis, and they basically just broke down. He basically broke down why the Hollywood industry is garbage about, like, uh, you know, like, minorities being cast in major roles and stuff. Mm-hmm. And he said um, and he said part, it was partly because that, they're, um, that Hollywood studios are just so chicken shit to even try. Because there aren't any like highly noticeable ones like on the level of ScarJo mm-hmm. that they're like, um, you know, oh, we, we have to, like we need this movie to succeed. And like the one of the only few noticeable Hollywood um, actresses who's good in an action movie is ScarJo. That's why they casted ScarJo as Makoto. And it's very understandable if like people are angry that it's a, it, that it's a white woman playing an Asian role. And, and because, yeah, obviously that that's whitewashing. But it, like they Hollywood is just stupid and too, it's literally just a case of a chicken with its head cut off trying to like oh, we need to make money who yeah. we'll cast in this role without even thinking about it and then they're like oh yeah this is kind of racist so they, so they think the way they can mend this is make ScarJo Asian in post production and honestly mm. like I kind of have this this sort of moral thing where it's like it's really hard to be mad at somebody who's completely fucking stupid <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so, sick. so like, I, like I'm not offended by Ghost in the Shell at all. Like, you pity if it? it if it if it was westernized and turned into like the the American Akira that Harry Partridge short, then I'd be like, fine, whatever. It's a dumb mm. movie. Who cares? Like, obviously, it's obviously they are whitewashing, and obviously that's bad. But I it's I just see this as like a bunch of movie execs who are too stupid to even function. So it's just like it's really it's really hard to be mad at somebody that dumb. It's like, wow, they tried. Well, they didn't try. They were just like desperate. No, no, no they did try. They they were desperate to try so much. I mean, this this is a great way to ruin 
uh, your relationship with the audience who's probably going to see this movie because of the name Ghost in the Shell. So I'm sure it'll make money based on the Scarlett Johansson's in an action movie, but the people who already didn't like they're making a live action movie of this are now even think of it as more of a joke. So, well, if you saw the synopsis, like ghost in the shell is all about like, um, the deconstruction of like humans and like cyborgs and like what it means to have a soul. If a soul even does exist at all. And it's not just some like yeah. construct of human beings. And you know how stupid the um, American Hollywood is. They're just going to fucking rip that shit out and be like, she's a cyborg. She likes to fight the, the bad guys. Yeah. I mean, well, it's they're not the even going to movie. Tr- they're not even going to try to touch upon that. The whole thing is just basically, all right, we have this uh, action-oriented thing with a female lead, and uh, Scarlett Johansson's doing really well as Black Widow, so we'll just take this element and put it into that, and it's successful. That's the only reason why I got greenlit. Not because yeah. of story, not because of the original thing. It's a established property, so it has built-in fan base, so that makes it less of a risk, and it's part of someone that's already big into other action movies. It's... It's just money. I mean, I'm, I just I, I just want to believe there's some executive like who greenlit this saying. So where's the horror in this thing? Where's the ghost? Who plays the ghost? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> why why is the ghost a turtle and why is it in? A, <laughs> where's the shell? It's a turtle ghost. It's a turtle ghost movie. Is that what it is? What's this? Okay. What I shell? mean, people like those ninja turtles. I guess it'll work. Yeah, I guess this could work. Yeah, just get uh, Scarlett <laughs> Johansson. It'll work. I really, I really hope they title drop like Ghost in the Shell. W- w- didn't they um, originally like James Cameron long, long ago wanted yeah. to do this or Spielberg? Like, I'm surprised they they just got the guy who did like I think Snow White and the Huntsman. Right? It's not like a great direct. I, I now I have to look that up. I'm actually not sure, but it's not. Yeah, Snow White and the Huntsman. It's not a great director choice. Um, and I was kind of like, you know, Ghost in the Shell, regardless of uh, how people... I don't know. I feel like it's something that needs a better director than, like, this guy who did Snow White and the Huntsman. Like, Is, is it just going to be an, a, a live-action remake of the movie from the 90s or, like, the TV show? Or what is it well, going to be? Well, if it was... If it was, I assume it's the movie, but why don't they just be like, we're going to do more of the thing with the manga. But the manga, and it's been a while since I've read it, so I can't say for sure. Uh, I believe was semi-close. I'm not exactly sure, but it didn't, I don't remember it being too different. Well, so. I, I've heard from Ghost in the Shell fans that the manga is a lot more, it's not as serious. There's still some comedy to it, but like um, the oh. TV show and movie, they're just deadpan and just super yeah. serious like i can um, never get into it i can uh i can summarize like makoto for example and the manga she's a lot more feminine and a lot um a lot more like uh out like outwardly feminine and she's just very um expressive and like act just acts like a, a basic protagonist and stuff and then the director of the movie um whatever his name is i'm so sorry um was like okay she's gonna be like a a, a really serious cyborg her eyes will never close She'll have like a doll like face and she'll be um, a little bit more um, she'll have realistic proportions and she'll be serious. And like it really works because yeah, one of my favorite details from that movie, like I said before, was her eyes never close ever because she's oh, a robot. Yeah. She's a robot. Why would her eyes need to close? So what if, what if they had made her what if they had actually made her playing a robot what? instead of. Like it, it's in the new movie, is she's probably just gonna blink and be human, basically. But she's a robot. Yeah. If they had her more playing a robot, they could have done something weirder with that. But yeah. of course, they didn't. So, well, I haven't seen it, so who knows? Maybe this movie will be good, and the CGI. I it won't be. What? Who am I no. kidding? <laughs> No, it's gonna the shit. Ghost in the, sh- the Ghost in the Shell will go of two ways. It'll either be competent enough to be boring, like the Jungle Book, or it'll be so hilariously misguided and fucking terrible. It'll be like a joy to watch, and I'm hoping it's the latter. Yeah, I, I just I, I like be- like bad misguided movies over like competent ones. I'm kind of I'm kind of with you on that. I, I mean, I think you're complimenting the Jungle Book a little too much in that, but well, I uh, <laughs> I didn't think Jungle Book like did anything that was like stupid other than like 
adapting a bad Disney movie, but hey, oh, I like whoa. I like that's a good Disney movie. Come on, okay. you don't like them, but anyway, I don't like the new one. What? I I was like okay, <laughs> but the uh, I actually saw Ghost in the Shell in theaters when it came out in America. Yeah, was, I I saw the movie with my dad like uh, in December of last year, and I was like, damn, that was slow as fuck, but yeah. it was. It was good. Yeah, how is this going to be a uh, 2017 action movie if it's going to be as slow as it is in dumb the anime? It down. Yeah, they're going to dumb it yeah. the fuck down for sure. Yeah. They'll add an action sequence in there. They'll have a sequence where we find out uh, Scarlett Johansson's character killed the villain's father, and that's why they hate each other. Yeah, and they'll probably turn those robots into like Transformers or something. Oh, that'd be cool. They no, should just dumb it up. Just get super dumb with it. Like, if you guys are like, like this is too serious, we have to make this a serious movie? No, nah, make them transform into, like, cars. Futuristic and have guns New York. Out cars. No, the, no, the opening sequence is a guy. He's running down an alleyway. And he's like, oh, shit. Oh, fuck. And he's, like, turning behind him constantly. He's like, where is she? And then he, like, turns around and, like, um, turns a corner. And she's there and she's pointing a gun at him. He's like, oh, and she's like, cowabunga. <laughs> <laughs> Dodge this. Yeah, oh my. the ghost in the shell theme comes on to rock and roll. Like, <laughs> no, it has said the opera theme, but like a remix dubstep version. Oh, yeah, get Skrillex in there. Yeah. Come on, what are we doing? I mean, it's robotic, so it has to, that, that makes sense for Hollywood. It's, it's cybernetic, yeah. Boom, 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 wee. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> I mean, Just speaking get, of which, do you think they're going to recreate the opening uh, where she's being made? Most likely. Yeah, but I feel like it's going to be really bad. It'll probably be that, but with her voice narrating over top of it about some people In, are born into this world. Some people are made. <laughs> it's so sad that I could actually picture that happening. Oh, God. Yeah, God, I can too. That's awful. Like, you ever see something recreated in live action? It's crap. Like, I remember I was watching a scene from the Resident Evil movies. I think the fifth one or something. And they have like a scene that where, where these two, I forget, I think it was, they fight Wesker. I think that's the bad guy. I don't even know Resident Evil. Yeah, either. Albert Wesker is the bad guy in yeah. Resident Evil 1. And they do a shot for shot like redo of like an action scene from the video games. Like they, sh they use the same angles except because this is live action, it's not as dynamic and it just feels really cheesy when it's done with real people and not CG characters. It's like I'll link to it below, but it's just like, man, live action ruined it. I'm going to I'm going to play devil's I'm going to sort of play devil's advocate but for from what I've heard so I'm this is secondhand accounts I hear the Silent Hill re, like the remake of the first opening in that game I mean that movie was pretty good Yeah well yeah I mean it, like because the Silent Hill 1 game opening is trippy as fuck like you're going through the town and then like once you get into an alleyway then, then it starts getting fucky but they like recreated that perfectly from what I heard in the movie and then the rest of the movie was just what? Oh, yeah. I mean, whenever people say best uh, video game movie, they always either refer to uh, the first Mortal Kombat or Silent Hill, which I don't know if that movie was that. The first Mortal Kombat? Yeah. Is that really that bad? No, they, they, oh. when they refer to like good action movies, oh. I mean, good video game oh, okay. movies. Okay, okay. So, I was going to say, was, I kind of liked the, the, the yeah. first uh, Mortal Kombat. Isn't the first Mortal Kombat like ton in cheek? Yeah. Because, like, Mortal Kombat has always been tongue-in-cheek about, like, its gore and its violence. Oh, there was no gore here. It was PG-13. Well, yeah. I, I meant I was talking about the video games proper. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no. Um, From what I heard, like, the Silent Hill movie, the problems were, like, with the, the fucking, like, Sean Bean character. And he was like, uh, my, my, my wife went to Silent Hill. And then somebody's like, what are you doing, though? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> and then, uh... And then, like, the best parts were just when they were showing off the town and, like, the cinematography and the CGI was actually pretty good for the time. So mm -hmm. that, that's what I hear anyway. And, and it, ma it makes me curious enough to want to see it. Uh, God, one of the um, the person who played Civil Bennett, the cop, wasn't she uh, in the it was either The Walking Dead or Game of Thrones or something. Oh, those are normie shows. Please don't. Please never again. Normies. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I never liked Ghost in the Shell. But the PlayStation 1 game was really good. Yeah, that still holds up. I mean, the controls are are very spot on. Like, at a time when everybody was doing, like, Tomb Raider, uh, you know, Tomb Raider movement with the tank controls. Th this game actually mm -hmm. feels very mobile. It feels way better than everything else that came out back then. So play that. What's sad is that there's about eight minutes of cutscenes. 
And those eight minutes have like an entire making of documentary on Laserdisc. And like, it seems like everybody cares more about the cutscenes to that game than the actual game itself. Well, you know, graphics are supreme, not not the way it plays or, I mean, you know, it, fun they, they were, factor. There were 2D animated cutscenes, you mm-hmm. know. Reminds me of the Evangelion game where they like tried to recreate the cutscenes with 2D and 3D and the 2D were just janky as fuck. Oh, yeah. Is funny as hell. I mean, I have the Evangelion game on 64, the actual cartridge in a box, but it doesn't play on American 64s. Like, I put a Game and Shark on top of the 64, and even then, like, it, it, it works for one second and it just dies. Well, don't you need something else other no. than a Game Shark? The the funny thing is that uh, Nintendo sixty four games are not are technically the the actual software is not region locked. It's physically region locked because the cartridges are a different shape, a slightly different shape. So you can't get it in all the way unless you have a Game and Shark to put on top of it. So nothing's blocking it. Well, if you have like a bunch of lube, it usually gets. Oh no! Yeah, that won't that won't gunk gun- gun- your console at all. <laughs> Anything to say on toast in the shell? Okay, first of all, don't say that again. <laughs> Toast. I haven't got to watch it yet. I think the only episode I saw was with uh, um, Adult Swim, April Fool's Day, where I think they added mustaches <laughs> to, to people, I think. Yeah. Or, yeah, I, I think I saw an episode then. I was just highly <laughs> amused by the mustaches. One April Fool's on oh, years ago, like they just played the same episodes of like stuff, but they added mustaches and I think farting noises <laughs> on top of everything. That, Amazing. That reminds me of when Cartoon Network, before there was an Adult Swim, and they just play Space Ghost. Mm-hmm. Um, for the last like half, uh, like the half hour afterwards, they'd play like the Herculoids and other cartoons, but add laugh tracks to it. <laughs> so it was like sp- like Space Ghost cartoon, like the old Space Ghost cartoons, uh, Hercules, all like sh- shows that weren't funny, but pick like little cartoons and put laugh tracks to them. They were I I remember thinking it was really cool. I mean I remember um, Scooby Doo having a laugh track. I don't know if that was part of the old show or they added no, that in. That's a- and that's in that show but th- these were like newer laugh tracks like and it didn't sometimes like someone would say something and it wouldn't even make any sense it was it was really funny and speaking of Cartoon Network airing things this was a tradition for like two years and they stopped it was I think Thanksgiving they aired uh, the Iron Giant for 24 hours yeah it was like July 4th I think 2000, no yeah, it was but, around 2003 like December I recall mm-hmm. and then like they did it again the next year yeah I think it was, it was like, I love that they only did it yeah. once. That was a one-time they, thing. I swear they did it twice. I, I feel know. like they did it twice. Because I got well, excited because I was like, it's going to happen every year. And then it did It was like right when The Incredibles was coming out. It was like around that mm-hmm. time, I believe. Oh, I guess maybe that's why, yeah. Yeah, I only remember it was 2003 because that's when Simpsons Hidden Run, Run came out and I got it for a Christmas. No, I got it for uh, uh, Three Kings. That's, that's Mexican Christmas. You put uh, your shoes out and then you get presents in your shoes and I got that. And you get to watch... The movie Three Kings with George Clooney. I ain't watching that. Oh, it was a pretty good movie. That's not a cartoon. No, it's not. Sorry. Thanks for nothing. <laughs> but hey, other news. Remember the nut job, the movie? What about it, Pan? What about the nut job, the movie? Nut job 2 gets a release date. Okay. Wait, what was the release date? Who cares? Oh, okay. (laughs) Warner Brothers has decided that they're going to make a cinematic universe. And you know what's going to jumpstart this cinematic universe? And you know what franchise it's going to be for? What? Scooby fucking do. They're gonna it's it's gonna be called Scoob as in S period C period O period O period B period and it's gonna be a cinematic universe with Hanna Barbera characters, so possibly like Johnny Quest, I was gonna say test, and uh the Flintstones maybe maybe the Herculoids, I don't freaking know, but And what's what are you starting this off? Scoob. Are they trying to do that? Is the Avengers style thing gonna be that like Olympics? The Laugh Olympics? The Laugh Olympics. Are they going to do that movie? <laughs> Maybe. 
Oh man, when I was a kid, when that would come on, I was like, everybody shut up. This shit is serious. Yeah. This Laugh Olympics is on. I need to see Scooby and Shaggy meet all the other versions of Scooby and Shaggy. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> that was at a time when everybody was ripping off Scooby Doo. Hanna Barbera beat everyone to the punch at ripping themselves off. Yeah. Like they ripped themselves off so hard by the time anyone else got to it, they're like, there's already six versions. God damn it. Like they, they well, were good at that. Well, because because not only Scooby, but like uh, they not only did they have like actually clever ripoffs like Jabberjaw or Speed Buggy, where they like they kind of played with the formula with it's underwater or it's oh, talking yeah. about the, the Mister Machine and Scooby are one thing, but then they also had fucking dogs, the Fang Face, like, yeah. and, and and then like I think go, uh, the Goose Gobers something I, I don't know it was like really close Punch Buggy or Hump Buggy what was his name? Uh, Speed Buggy. Speed Buggy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Didn't even <laughs> like Captain Caveman had some teenagers following him around. That that was that was like Charlie's Angels. Yeah. Like he was hanging around these teen girls. I don't know why with why this old man who was like over thousands of years old is just hanging around these teen girls. And what was that about? I don't, I don't know. know. They just they had a formula. They 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 basically had a Mad Libs type formula and had blank. So they go fill in these. That's your show. Leave us alone. Yeah, like a caveman, a a, a buggy, a, I think a ghost at one point was wasn't there a ghost? I think maybe of some historical figure. No, no, that, the, the funky phantom. Yeah, funky phantom, which is the inspiration <laughs> for that one ghost in uh, Mike Tyson mysteries. Oh my god! because well, because I think it was just uh, the Pink Panthers voice or something. No, no, it, they, they reused yeah, it was. The voice actor. Yeah, yeah, it was just like, well, what even? <laughs> I mean, it's, it, it was it's such a nice formula. They'd just have a group of teenagers and they'd solve mysteries with this other thing. And you guys saw Mystery Incorporated, right? They yeah. did an episode based around it. <laughs> oh, yes. That was so good where all this, all the animal sidekicks solve a mystery together. <laughs> that was, <laughs> man, Mystery Speed Incorporated. Buggy. Oh, what a it good was Speed Buggy, Funky Phantom, uh, Scooby, of course. Uh, it was a Jabberjaw and... Um, and the caveman that was like that yeah. was just the five <laughs> and then the fucky a... phantom was the villain yeah oh man that was that seriously was the best scooby-doo show that was such a good show Damn. i had to meet Derek last week you did uh, yeah yeah at botcon he was there uh i got i got a signature of uh he drew you met who optimus prime uh Derek what Derek g wyatt the guy that, oh yeah Derek. uh the art design for Omniverse, Ben, T- yeah, Ben Ten Omniverse, Mister Incorporated, Transformers Animated, and uh-huh. uh, and he also did. He's currently working on the uh, the Ninja Turtles Half Shell Heroes things. Okay, well, yeah, because there's a new, there's another Ninja Turtles show going on at the same time as the CG one, and it's basically all comedy. So you know, it's it's Teen Titans Go. He was, he was a really cool guy. He uh, really chill, very introverted. Um, he he t- he talked a little bit about like you know the, he was obviously kind of you know sad that a lot of the things that he worked on you know ended but mm-hmm. he's happy what he's doing uh, and then we I, I talked to him about like how the, it would have been really cool if they converted Bulkhead from animated into the Mystery Machine like that is his alt mode <laughs> and, and then we talked about like how they could like do it real cheaply it was fun so anyone excited for this Scooby Doo extended universe. I, no. I wanted to mention something about the Laugh Olympics. Um, okay. John K. I want to talk about John K. a little bit. Uh, his blog's <laughs> kind of awful. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, basically. My, my favorite thing is he talks about how like all the modern day cartoons look too much alike, and it's awful. Unlike his cartoons, and then he lists off examples, and they're all Hanna Barbera, and like the, the, it's so ironically funny if, that like my cartoons are better than your cartoons because I grew up with them. The mentality of it because they literally were so close together in style that they put them in the same shows laugh olympics yeah. wacky races yeah. everything I'm t- i need to find this blog post where he's m- talking about ben 10 i was always a defender of omniverse because i actually like Derek j wyatt's style it does it, it like i because i kind of secretly wanted a crossover between ben 10 <laughs> scooby-doo and transformers um but like I, I liked a lot of the decisions he made um, regarding the characters. Sometimes, but then again, I like goofier stuff. So like forearms in like 1950s bodybuilder, you know, weightlifter outfit with the handlebar mustaches. I'm sold. I think that's great. That's hilarious. Uh, but man, did Gwen suck in that ep- in that show? Like her her, her design was just ugh. okay. John K wrote this on his blog, and I'll link to it below. But it says. 
This is a style I don't comprehend. It's less obvious ugly than the 80s human proportion shows like He-Man or Thundercrap. It takes those unanimatable proportions and simplifies the details while gluing big Bambi cartoon eyes onto them. I guess to try to get some instant appeal. Putting big sparkly eyes on male characters makes them look pretty gay, and I don't understand the appeal of that. The girl's forehead is too short. She looks like a Fox News anchor. <laughs> <laughs> what an awful That's human being. gay thing. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, what an asshole. I love him. <laughs> Dick. <laughs> I hate him. John Case is like a cranky old man who doesn't know things anymore. He's like a cranky old racist who doesn't know any better. Yeah. He's like grown up in the thir- grew up in the 30s and now he's like 80 or 90 or whatever the fuck that math is. He's like, oh, look at those fucking blacks. And you're like, Grandpa, no, stop, please. If you, ever want to, if you ever want to cringe, just uh, watch, go on YouTube and look up the video John K being John K and it's just him talking about his uh, adult party cartoon, Ren and Stimpy series yeah. and he has like these female animators with him and he's just making all these inappropriate jokes and uh, you can tell that they're just uncomfortable there and it's just like oh i went to this q a once and ralph back she was there mm-hmm. and he spent like 15 minutes talking about everything john k's done wrong i was like whoa damn that she's <laughs> sweet i wish i was there like i remember someone turned to me and went like did they just like get off the did he just get off the phone with john k and wanted to vent because it was <laughs> like it was like it went like like you never miss delivery on a movie or a show that is unprofessional that is what i was like john this is why you're in the mess you're in and i was like holy shit dude like <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> bakshi like like we're all here right now do you, are you aware you like really went on and we we're like yeah Oh, this is getting uncomfortable. Yeah, John K, the creator of Ren and Stimpy, he is known for like missing all his deadlines and just being a perfectionist and just like not turning stuff in until it's absolutely perfect, which does not work well if you're working in a TV studio when you get to turn in no. stuff on a deadline. I mean, you you really shouldn't. It's bad in any professional setting if you miss your thing unless you like email them and have a production problem which mm-hmm. their production problem i think was actually john k himself so i don't know if you can email no. them that. sorry yeah. but i don't know it's like i i think most people thought he would get better that was kind of the thing in the 90s like maybe when the uh, the one on spike came out he would behave himself and it be- became pretty clear pretty quickly he was not going to do that <laughs> No, I mean, Adult Party Cartoon, the adult reboot of Ren Stimpy, it lasted six episodes, but only two of them aired. Yeah, it was, it was like, I remember, uh, I was actually taking an animation class and the teacher like sadly came into the classroom and told us like he missed the date, the delivery date on a couple of episodes. And it was like, like the whole medium went, well, we thought he could come back and it's not happening. Like it was like everyone was just like disappointed. I just remember it, like being like uh, I remember reading it and going like yeah figures, and everyone else was like just fuck. Like they were just like 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 he's he's not coming back. Forget it. You were the chosen one. It was said that you would destroy this and not join them. Bring balance to the force, not leave it in darkness. You were the chosen one. Well, you know what. He was in the 90s. He really was. And he and he fucked it like there was apparently there were job openings for Ren and Stimpy and there were lines around the block. Like everyone wanted to work on that show. Mm -hmm. Every like every celebrity loved like it was like a hot cartoon before Rugrats took off and before Doug kept airing, I guess. Doug was fine, but it wasn't is huge anyway sorry but the it's just like he had the big 90s show like he could have really been this huge creator if he wanted to and he fucked it up and then he fucked up his comeback so you know it's kind of well sorry sorry john k i still love what he did i'm not saying any of his i love ren and stimpy a lot but i just wish he had maybe been a little more responsible yeah if he was well the adult party thing doesn't really work either because, like, a lot of the charm of Ren and Snimpy is he, he, he got that past the censors. You know, like, they're pushing the... Yeah, or, or but, that 
that's a actually that is a really good point because that episode where they take what is it a Tom and Jerry cartoon or something and change it from a dog to a baboon. The Ren and Stimpy episode from the nineties. I think it, it might be Tom and Jerry. It's some cartoon where they're trying to get past a dog, and in the Ren and Stimpy episode, they they basically change it to a baboon, and it's like. I don't know. It's like that's the cool thing about it. It's like it, the twist he would put cartoons in that bizarre idea mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. making it uncensored just makes it like defeats the point. It, There's no restraint. Yeah, it's like it used to be like, oh my god, I can't believe they're doing this. And then if they can do anything, it's like, I mean, of course they're gonna do this. They can do anything. Who's gonna say no? And nobody liked adult party cartoon. Well, I mean, like just just add bloobs and it'll be great. And it's it's not, you know. Again, I think a lot of the appeal of Ren and Stimpy is, oh look, I can't believe I can't believe this is a kid's cartoon. This aired on TV. When when you have full reign, it's just it's like, like there's nothing to shock by. There's no like thrill of watching it. Um, yeah. at least in my or, opinion. Or how irrelevant and indifferent it is. But then when you have a show that it's like the problem with a lot of things that are unexpected. Did, um, when you're watching them, you're like, I can't believe they're doing this. Once you get used to that rhythm, the unexpected is then expected. So it's not unexpected anymore. You know, it's not as fun and freeing because like, I wonder like if anyone's going to like Deadpool as much when there's like a third Deadpool movie, because they're going to be like, oh, I'm used to this rhythm. It's like more fun when it's like, oh my God, I can't believe that did that. Mm-hmm. And when that feeling's gone, it's like, you know, you're not getting it back, you know? Well, I mean, like a lot of people were really excited about Deadpool, but I think a lot of it was because no one was expecting it to be as close to Deadpool as it was. Yeah. You know, and I, I think that 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 really gets people very excited. Or be and rated I, R. What's that? Or be rated R, too. Right. And so like I, that the, sometimes the circumstance makes a movie a lot better than it actually is. I think the case with Frozen, I think a lot of people are going back and being like, Frozen wasn't as good as we kept talking about. Uh, but, you know, but when seeing it, I remember really enjoying it. But now after the, the hype's done of, you know, Disney making good movies again, you could be a little bit more critical and be like, oh, well, I think yeah. Frozen, it was more because you really didn't know beforehand. I don't think there were that many trailers um, that really showed you what the plot was. I didn't really know what I was getting into because I saw like the first show um, and I remember the audience just being won over and being like, what the fuck? What was that? Like, no one knew, no one knew about the songs. Like, I didn't know what let it go was before. Like, I didn't know anything. And I just, I heard from people the next morning who to, you know, were excited for the new Disney movie. You saw the early show. Everyone was on Twitter being like, holy shit. Like you guys don't even know. And I think like that surprise is why Frozen became so big because I knew a lot of people had that experience the first time. But then when I talked to people who saw it, you know, in January when their little cousins sang Let It Go and uh, Do You Want to Build a Snowman 20 times during Christmas. um, Of course, I don't think you're going to like it as much, but I don't know if it holds up as well as like it's never been as good for me as the first time uh, when it was unexpected because it was just like – I did like Zootopia. I knew more of what I was getting into, or Big Hero Six. That because the, most of the trailers was just the Olaf and the elk or something, right? I mean, mm-hmm. I don't remember yeah. knowing much beyond that. Yeah, John Kay's a hack. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's a talented artist, but like he's a fucking asshole. So. <laughs> hey, have you ever watched his uh, Simpsons couch gags? The second one with the one about Halloween is a mess like he, he, I, you can barely comprehend what the characters are doing it's just a bunch of blobs on screen yeah. doing things well, well like because I, like, I was following John King in, in college uh, John King Desi John King John K sorry there's, there's I had an instructor named John King um, and like I remember like following his blog and then I got to that point with the, the article that I read about you know cartoons not looking all looking the same and that's when I started kind of like maybe I shouldn't just idolize him. maybe I could just enjoy his art but not the person and then he went and did the Miley Cyrus animations for like her oh. con- or, like her thing, and I was like, "That feels so wrong, but fitting." I don't know. I don't. <laughs> I I just assume it was just a really good paycheck. Most because I, I can't because I can't what, see him. What like, does he do anymore other than complain on his blog? Nothing. Oh, he doesn't. He doesn't <laughs> go on that blog anymore. He's, oh. 
He kind of shut up for a while back, I guess, <laughs> to oh. give himself jobs, maybe. Yeah. My, my point was, like, he's not even motivated to actually finish his, his passions, like Ren and Stimpy. Couldn't even get those done. So, like, what what motivated him for fucking Miley Cyrus? Money. You know? Money. But, like, I just, I just, I'm curious about how much he got from that, though. I don't know. We're all procrastinators. So, I don't know. I kind of feel John K. might be just one big procrastinator that, or, or he just goes back and keeps changing things. Like, uh, no, I'm not satisfied with this. Keep changing this because that's what I do. What if I grow up to be John K.? I don't think so. I hope not. Yeah. Oh. I mean, maybe in the talent thing, but not in the attitude way or not. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know about that part. The attitude part. <laughs> we'll see in a few years. <laughs> yeah. John K. More like John KKK. What? That was a stretch. You know he probably joined the KKK at one point, possibly. I'm... Speaking, I'm not having anything speaking to do of with that. This. Um, there's th- there's this kid at my work, and he's probably one of the dumbest people I've ever met. And he literally walked up to me as I was doing lemons, cutting up lemons and juicing them for a lemonade. And he's like, "Hey, Nolan." I'm like, "Yeah." He goes, "Are you the member of the KKK?" I was like, I, I was just kind of taken aback for a second. I was like, "What?" And he goes, "God, I'm so triggered." And then he walks away. <laughs> and I'm like. <laughs> What? <laughs> yeah, those two jokes don't even work together. Uh, I, I, maybe it was his first yeah. day on Tumblr. Oh my god! I... Was it his first day talking to people? <laughs> John K is not a member of the KKK. Just we're being jokes. Please don't sue us. Anyway, uh, the Cool Kids Club. <laughs> okay, maybe John K is part of that. John K could be part of the Cool Kids Club. With is it, is that, that, I'm assuming that's been a joke before. Yeah, it, it, it was. Uh, that's why I thought you were leading to with that. We didn't like, meant that joke. Because I thought I thought when you were like, "Oh, um, uh, are you part of the K- KKK?" No, so you're not a cool kid. You know, you're not part of the Cool Kids Club. Like, I don't know. What are you doing hanging around a bunch of kids, you weirdo? I don't care how cool they are. That's still re- really weird. Joke where where Krusty the Clown comes out and goes, "Welcome to Krusty the Clown, the uh, Krusty Comedy Classics." <laughs> and he goes up and he's like, "KKK." Oh, that was that was a joke. I can't believe John K would do this. The quest for the newest fruit roll-ups continues. Finally, Stevie, it is ours. Don't you know what that means? A creation of my very own, made from my stinky sweat socks. He's gone mad. No Ren. Yes, yes. <laughs> It's new Nickelodeon Peelouts, Ram, Stimpy, Doug, and more. Nickelodeon characters now on Fruit Roll-Ups. What fun Fruit Roll-Ups will we roll out with next? <laughs> um, all right, what do we got next? Okay, no more John K. Still, are you okay? Yeah, yeah, fine. Uh, okay. There's some new Powerpuff Girls still that popped up on my Tumblr. Oh, boy, what happened this the time? Jojo Jojo thing? Uh, they, well, Miss Keen no longer has boobs. They, like her, her design is exactly the same thing, but just without the boobs. Oh boy! No, she, um, she has longer sleeves too. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, she, she's wearing a sweater versus a vest, but like, and then some like there's small little things like her shoes are different colors, but like, yeah, just just no boobs, just <laughs> too sexual, I guess. And then uh, apparently that unicorn episode aired. I haven't seen it yet, but. Tumblr's like you know nitpicking every little part of it and discussing. Well, I I don't mean like nitpicking as like a bad thing where like they're just going through it and Justice Warrior whatever. But like I mean like they're going through and just kind of like pointing how this could be a bad message. Okay, what happened was with that episode, that unicorn episode, is in the L.A. Times. One of the showrunners actually came out and said, "Yeah, we have a unicorn episode. It's gonna explore gender identity. Uh, it's about it's very deep. It's very deep about this unicorn. It's it's about this horse that wants to be a unicorn." A mythical creature, which already you made a mistake with that part. Mm-hmm. No, wait, they said in the actual interview, like, we're, we're going to be like Steven Universe and explore gender identity. And it's like, they just got some random episode and shoved a, they just made up a BS message about it. And when you actually put the message in the context of the episode, it comes off as absolutely insulting to the people that it was trying to, like, appeal to. It literally has Buttercup going up to the, 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 the wannabe unicorn and grabbing its horn 
and knocking it off of the head. But here's how the episode ends. Okay, so this horse wants to be a unicorn. He gets some, he uh, modifies his body with the professor's science stuff, and that turns him into a monster. So if you modify your body, you're a fucking monster. That's what this episode is saying. And at the very end, some unicorns come out and save the horse and turn him back to a normal horse. But he's like, oh, but I still wish I was a unicorn. And it turns out... He was a unicorn the whole time because he was an idiot who didn't know that if you brush his hair aside, he already had a unicorn horn. So he was physically a unicorn the whole time. (sighs) These people who work on the show are just using like gender identity to be trendy in the same way they use like yas or uh, no me gusta memes. Like they seriously had a scene where Bubbles pops out a nose and she says no me gusta like the meme. The worst part is that's not even the right meme. The nose is from the no meme. No, I'm, I'm calling the Anti-Defamation League to just, like, report that nose that they drew on Bubbles. First off, it would have been fine if this was a random episode. But the fact that they went on publicly bragging about how they're being awesome and touching upon important issues and trying to be an ally. And they fuck it up so <laughs> wrong. Yeah, it just seems like they're just trying to be trendy because they say it's we're going to be like Steven Universe. Like they want that Tumblr uh, fields. I don't know. Fandom. But no, the world. I I can't even tell if it's genuine. Like if it's one of those things where like, yeah, yeah, we're going to do this. We're going to we're going to we're going to make this episode and people are going to share it and be like, yeah, yeah. You know, this show's pro trans. Or if they 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 promoted it that way and then did it wrong just to get the Tumblr people to get angry and basically do a bunch of negative publicity, but still free advertising the new show. I mean, I have to wonder, like, is all the is the show meant to be awful? Like, it's, it's the same with those anti-smoking ads that are so try hard to be cool. Like, people are going to make fun of it and that's free advertisement. Someone's going to people are talking about it because it's so shitty. And pe- are people watching it because it's shitty? Mm. Did, did they succeed? Did they just, like, give up on all artistic integrity and make something that shit? I think you're trying to justify the pain inside of you. <laughs> like, it, the sad part is, like, the people working on this were probably thought they were the greatest and most talented people ever, and they're just realizing, wow, we fucking suck. I mean, are they gonna... Is this show doing well? I don't know. Because it doesn't seem to be, like, everything I've read about it is negative. Like, nobody seems to like it. I mean, I doubt new people are like new audiences are connecting to it. So I'm kind of hoping it, it like this is the only season because <laughs> I, ca- I can't bear to, to see this keep going. It's just ridiculous. It's like, like the cartoon right when you think Cartoon Network's like really cool and has all these great shows or like something like this comes on. You're like, oh, way to suck all the air out of the room. It's kind of it's kind of depressing. Honestly, it's like. This shouldn't have been that hard to fuck up. Like, <laughs> no. Well, is this the new era of Cartoon Network shit like this? Well, I mean, if this is this bad, like, can't wait for the new Ben 10 reboot that's coming out whenever. <laughs> well, that's okay. To be in, in in its defense, it looks the like the still they released of Ben looks fucking shitty. But um, the aliens look good. Huh? The aliens don't look bad. No, no, no. no. Wait, they released the aliens? I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've seen, like, Forearms and uh, Cannonbolt. Okay, well, link me. Uh, all right, I'll, let's shit. do this. But uh, um, Man of Action is coming back as executive producers, and usually executive producers have some say in what goes on. Yeah. All, I, all I think Craig McCracken did for this was, I guess you can make it. I mean, he's not working on this. Yeah, he's not working on it. All he did was give the show the green light, I guess, which is kind of what they needed in order to make it in the first place, but... Like all God damn, does Ben look awful in this? I think he gets he gets checks though. Oh no, yeah, he of course he gets checks. No, he doesn't. Because he created it. If you create something, you own a percentage. Oh, of the oh, that's not problem. true. Not for animation. No. Wait, really? It goes back to that uh, constant pain p- animated pilot I talked about in the top ten worst Nickelodeon uh, moments. Basically, uh, animators they get paid to do do a job and they create a character. Every time that episode airs on TV or sells merchandise. The cartoonist or the writers aren't getting none of that money. It's just going to the studio. Well, I thought, though, if you create something, like I know if you create a live action show, you own a percentage oh, yeah. of that. Live like a action. small percentage. And I guess animation is different. Yeah, animation is different. You... That's bullshit. Yeah, it's fucked up. Like, I'm waiting for like a potential like strike that would happen in the animation industry, but I don't know if that could ever work because... 
I guess these like studios just see these uh, creators as expendable. Like they can just like re- hire someone else to do the job. Um, they don't get any merchandise money, even if you create nope. it. Really? Yeah. I'm like, I was uh, reading Maxwell Adams' post on Tumblr, and he talked about that, and he's saying that he gets nothing out of any Billy and Mandy reruns or whatever. I mean, I know like Trey Parker and Matt Stone got tons off the merchandise, so that's. I guess it's more of like based per network. Yeah. Or like the guy who created SpongeBob, I know, gets percentages. What the fuck? So, because he, he's like, like super uber rich. Like he, he retired or something. Damn. But then unretired? I'm not sure. I'm sure someone's going to clear that up. But I know like Trey Parker and Matt Stone made like so much money off that early wave of South Park merch that like took over everything. You you know yeah. uh, Trey Parker or was it Matt Stone? I forget. One of them is gonna voice a villain in Despicable Me Three. It's a Trey Parker. Trey Parker, yeah. I was surprised that he's never. They haven't acted in someone else's thing since like basketball. It's like, why are they doing this? Like, why is he doing this? I don't. I was kind of surprised. Doesn't sound like something he would do, especially like Illumination. I mean, it's not like they're even good like damn I, don't know. I wanted to quickly interject about the ben 10 thing that stev linked uh where, where's this from what's the source uh, i'm just going going off google i assumed it's official it, uh, it I, says it says the ben 10 omniverse logo next to it though yeah I, I assume the images are probably from like the actual thing and then um because i'm seeing the 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 the, the, the diamond head well, um, go, to, go to the visit page instead of the uh, the direct image links. So, you guys want to get into the questions? I just okay. want to say first, this new pen looks fucking terrible. Okay. I agree. Well, I guess Cartoon Network wants to get the Powerpuff Girls reboot out of the way so we can all complain about Ben 10, which I don't care about Ben 10, so they can do whatever they want with him. Ben 10's fun. It's shit turning into other shit. I love it. Questions. If anybody has a question, be sure to start out with the word question so it's easier to find and post them on the YouTube video of this podcast the first week it's on the air because we record after each week. Yeah. First question is Casey Corley. Question. Favorite line in a song slash rap. Mine is Fuck Boys by Tyler the Creator. Okay. Wait, what? Favorite line in a song or rap. Like favorite lyric. Oh, okay. I don't even okay. know. Well, I have one because mine it was from uh, back when Will Smith did uh, rap music during mm-hmm. his millennium phase, like the 2000s. Like it wasn't the new millennium. It was the millennium. It was his millennium. In one of his songs, he went. Uh, I read in rap pages. They referred to me as saw. Yeah, more like Microsoft. Will Gates said the rap game quintessential megalomaniac. What's my rap name? I'm the man, not conceited. I'm as good as I say I am. Other rappers say I'm soft. Yeah, Microsoft. <laughs> oh yeah, because he invested in Microsoft, or I guess. I just thought, wow, that sucks. I, I can't think of it. I'm never good at coming up with my favorite. Um, mine isn't really the lyric itself, but the way it was sang. Can you guys guess where it's from? Lincoln Park. Oh boy. Can you guess? Can you guess? No. Is there um, Sonic? I, no. I can guess. Um, it's from the song "Another Day" from Rent. <laughs> <laughs> it's specifically the uh, the final Broadway version. Um, the the final filming on Broadway, and it's um a song between Roger and Mimi, and uh, it basically Mimi's like, dude, listen, you gotta fucking stop being an emo faggot and get out and enjoy your life before you fucking die. No day but And Roger's like, fuck you, dude. And then uh, one of the lyrics says, take your powder, take your candle. But the way he sings it, I was just like, mm, yes, that was good. But yeah, it's not a very it's not a very um, fun line at all. It's just uh, there. But I like it. So fuck you. That's my answer. Eat a dick. We all will do such things. Yeah, maybe later. So no other lyrics. 
Um, I'm not good at... There's probably something by the Beastie Boys, but I can't think of it right now. More like Bestiality Boys. What? Yes. That's odd. Look, okay, that was alleged, but, you know, you never know. It's plausible what they did that one time. At that in, in that zoo. All right, all right, Ken, the joke's done. You <laughs> fucked yeah. it. Hmm. Okay, Gil Lag says, question, what was the last album you paid money for, and what format was it on? iTunes, CD, cassette, vinyl, 8-track, etc. All my albums are digital. Um, <laughs> let's see what my... Um, I, I buy songs, so I'm not counting those. Let me see what the full album was. It's on my iPod right now. Oh, oh um, it was um, a, I bought a, a set of Pliny's albums. He does a bunch of online music, and it's really fucking good. One of my favorites is Every Piece Matters, and I'll link it. So, Pan, you better include this in the link dump, you fucker. Yeah, hopefully I remember it. Uh, I think the last album I bought was the Hamilton soundtrack, which is pretty good. The last album I bought... I think it might have been Ninja Sex Party. <laughs> it was it was either Ninja Sex Party or I just rebought the Digimon soundtrack. I mean, for sure, I usually buy songs from like smaller indie artists or whatever, but uh, usually off Bandcamp. Yeah, same. Yeah, this one I bought is uh, from this band called Megas, which they did an entire like rock remix of all the uh, Mega Man songs from the old NES games. And, like, it, it kind of feels like a musical. Like, you can imagine this being part of, like, some Mega Man musical or rock opera or something. I stand before a line in the sand, the fight lies ahead. Fate in my hands today, the end begins. And if it was up to me, I'd rewrite half story and change my destiny. But next question, the giant rat says, question, is Emily older or younger? She's old enough. All right. Wait, next. A, gi- a giant rat asked that question? Yeah, one. Just oh. one. Wow. I didn't know rats could use the internet. It's That's Splinter. He's a radical rat. We have, the ninja, we have Ninja Turtles. They're fans of the podcast now. Anthony Cabrera. What is your favorite show based on a movie? Mine is Emperor's New, Gr- New School. Um, show based on a movie. Mine is um, Clerks Animated, since obviously we talked about this earlier in the podcast. Uh, that, that's such a better choice than what I was going to say. Yeah. Oh, what, what were you going to say? I was going to say the Aladdin series. Oh, yeah. And they had a cross. Didn't Aladdin have a crossover with Hercules and they're the same voice actor? Uh, I don't know if they're the same voice actor, but I know that Hercules had an episode in which Hades brought back Jafar, who's now human again for some reason. Oh. And uh, and they team up together, being like, "Well, why don't we just pitch the two together?" So it's a Aladdin versus Hercules thing, which is really cool. Yeah, and really w- good way to like you know work that together. Though I'm I don't believe Hercules and Aladdin are in the same time period. No, <laughs> no they're I don't like think so. thousands of years <laughs> apart, maybe. Or like, what was that crossover where they had two of the Jim Carrey the show, <laughs> the, the Mask, the Mask and, and Ace Ventura? Ace Ventura. It was. Oh, is that? But there was also a Dumb and Dumber show, but that didn't cross over. No. I guess. So it was just The Mask and Ace Ventura crossover. Why? That's so crazy that that happened. Yeah, it's kind of weird that the Dumb and Dumber cartoon, like, a lot of people from Cartoon Network started on that, like Craig McCracken, I believe. But I don't think it aired on actual Cartoon Network. Only in Mexico I saw it and was like, what the hell is this? This looks like two stupid dogs. It was on, like, a a Saturday morning thing, but it didn't last very long i don't think mm-hmm. like a cb when cbs had a saturday morning way back when yeah you know when, my favorite thing about the 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 crossover between the mask and a tour because then they have different voice actors and different designs even though it's supposed to be both jim carrey <laughs> yeah yeah they did <laughs> yeah. so we i don't i don't know the answer to this question because i don't think i've actually seen anything that's based on a movie an animated series based on a movie so i'm gonna pass mm-hmm. i mean i did like i did go through a phase recently of Watching the Men in Black cartoon, which was really good. Oh man, I like that studio a lot because they did. They, didn't they do Extreme Ghostbusters, um, uh, a- no. Alien Alienators, which is the Evolution cartoon? I, I know they're infamous for having intro theme songs that are a, really awesome, and the show is just oh good. Yeah, 
I'm really excited. Extreme Ghostbusters got on Hulu. Maybe they might eventually release it on DVD. Yeah. Actually, the theme song uh, to Men in Black is like really good. <laughs> Way better than the show almost. <laughs> Yeah, their their intros are way better than the actual show, which I don't know applies to every cartoon, but they're they're notorious because like around the '90s and 2000s, like intros were just were getting to the same level as the cartoons themselves. I guess they didn't look yeah. so jarringly uh, different. Next question, Ace Rimmer. Question: How do you feel about voice actors that use the same voice for different characters, like Harry John Benjamin doing the same voice for Archer and Bob Belcher? Wait, hold up. His first name is actually Harry? I thought it was just H. John Benjamin. <laughs> no, I didn't know I, that stood for something until just yeah, now. Yeah, didn't realize that now. Wow, I thought... Is this Harry? That's crazy. I think back to Homer so, Simpson finding out his, his middle name. Like, for all his life, he was just Homer J. Simpson. But when he found out what his name really stood for, it was actually J, as in J-A-Y. <laughs> oh. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, back up. So what's this thing about the guy having the same voice? Uh, how do you feel about voice actors who use the same voice for different characters? You mean Yuri Lowenthal? Who that? He voices Sasuke, Ben 10, the teenage years, and uh, Yosuke Hanamura from Persona 4. There's also uh, Patrick Warburton, who plays pretty much the same character with the same yep. mannerisms. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't mind it. It's not like a huge problem because some, you know, what are they going to do a different voice each time? Or I, it's fine for yeah. me. I don't see what the big. I mean, you know, it's just like it is a little weird when you're used to when someone's voice is really iconic for a certain character. Yeah, though, but. yeah worst case scenario can take you right out of the thing you're watching. Best case scenario is just like, uh, look, it's them again. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, I remember watching uh, that one Return to Oz movie, the one with James Franco, you know? and um, mm-hmm. um, Or Oz the Great and Powerful. Yeah, uh, yeah I was going to say, okay. uh, Return to Oz is the goth girl from The Craft as Dorothy. I'll write that down so I can watch later. But anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. But um, <laughs> um, my, Mila Kunis is in that movie, and you like you just can't help but associate her voice with Meg. From Family Guy. Oh, I, I've seen movies with Mila Kunis in it, and people in the audience have yelled out and gone like, "Shut up, Meg! Shut up! <laughs> You're so stupid, Meg!" I was like, "Wow, guys, like, Damn. stop it! I'm trying to watch Jupiter Ascending here." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. Oh <laughs> no, I forgot that happened. Oh. I think I think Mila Kunis for, wants you to forget that happened. She, she probably blacked out the entire film and just has no idea she made that. I mean, culturally, I feel like we all blacked out that film. <laughs> that was the day nobody went to the movie theater. I mean, wait, 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 wait. randomly. I'm sorry. This is completely off topic, but I just thought about it. Whatever fucking happened to that uh, kids Burger King Kids Club looking Scooby Doo cartoon? Mm, oh wait, do you mean um? Uh, the, the newest one, where like it looked like kind of like fa- Brickleberry. Oh, oh. oh, they dumped it on Boomerang, yeah. I guess. Because because that that was I mean is that what is that the fate of Powerpuff Girls? Because like it seemed like everyone was talking about it, and then it was just like oh this is you know mediocre as fuck. Well, done with this. I don't think that Scooby Doo show did that ever even play on Cartoon Network. Yeah, I think, I think it, it, yeah. the first like four episodes, and they just dumped it on Boomerang. I mean, I think that's probably the fate of Powerpuff Girls. But uh, we don't... Does anyone know how it's doing? I mean... I don't, I don't know. Really... It's on Boomerang. <laughs> oh, 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 the Powerpuff Girls. I don't know. Uh-oh. I mean, I heard, like, the first episode premiere did worse than a rerun of Sonic Boom. But I don't know if that's true Uh-oh. or not. Wait, which one did? Powerpuff Girls? Yeah, it did worse... The premiere episode did worse than Sonic Boom. That's what I heard. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm going to check the Wikipedia. I mean, most... Well, <laughs> Sonic Boom is getting another season, so... Wait, the Wikipedia, gee. No, the, um... <laughs> the, I mean, most cartoons, they kind of grow as they go on, but that's still really bad, especially for a show that's, um, you know, based off something that's already established. I yeah. mean, that's pretty ridiculously... I mean, probably because no one really wanted this, and it didn't look promising at all i mean like it's kind of deceiving like it kind of sort of feels like the same show at first but it has like none of that uh intensity or 
techno punk style to it anymore. That's true. All right, all right. Well, right. So I'm going to compare it to regular shows, uh, current airings. It's doing better than regular show. Uh, like, well, it's about doing the same on par. So according to the Wikipedia. That's not really that good. I mean, regular show airs on Saturday. Saturday, that's like a dead time slot. Right, because like right now, uh, the average episode of regular show is getting about one point one, or you know, like you know, one point ten, and then Wait, uh, how many? If if it did worse than Sonic Boom, and that Sonic Boom is doing better than regular show, then how many? How are the reruns of Sonic Boom doing? Jesus. Oh, you know. uh, let's actually look at Sonic Boom's uh, ratings. I mean, I don't know how true, how good of a resource Wikipedia is for ratings. It, I know, I, but I think it is because um, when I I used to look at Symbionic Titans ratings when I was like, it's it's not going to get canceled. No. <laughs> and they said that it did like two to three million viewers, and I was like, oh, uh, that's good, right? And now I'm thinking that was probably lies. Mm. Uh, I mean, who even knows? But I I still think that that. Yeah. If if kids aren't into it, and All we're right. not into it, well, you Sonic know what? Boom is airing. Uh, its premieres are getting, according to the Wikipedia, zero point seventy oh. on average. So it's doing better than Sonic Boom's new episodes. Well, what what um the thing I don't get about TV reboots is do any of them do well? Like most of them fail, right? I mean, look at the. Uh, odd couple reboot i mean unless you're like fuller house it feels like nobody really cares about most of them no. and they don't really succeed past a season it's not like like movies like jurassic world or something it like just doesn't seem to work out so maybe it's like a failed concept in itself mm-hmm. i know I, f- I feel like there's been some successful reboots i can't think of it. i'm trying to think of them like I, I feel a the lot better, of people, the, the fact that you have to think about them though <laughs> Well, well, uh, well, okay, so, okay. You have to think about what defines successful. Whether well, or not like, fans well, liked it, or whether well, or not it got canceled and you know, didn't get canceled. Because, like, for I example, think if, Thundercats, people seem to really like that one, but no, it I, got canceled pretty quickly. No, actually, I did like Thundercats, but right. I think I mean like like ones that. Well, there's there's tons of like uh, X Men, oh. Ninja Turtle reboots over well, the years. Like those almost don't count because it's like that's. A franchise. On six, yeah, it's a yeah. franchise based on another medium. Okay. I think like so, something that's banking on just the show, and I think Thundercats works with that, or well, Scooby Doo kind of does. And yeah, Scooby Doo counts. I guess Mystery Incorporated is the only one I've ever really liked. That's a reboot. Yeah, <sighs> but yeah, going back to that question. Um, so what do you think of voice actors that recycle the same voice? Because for me, like I was like bothered at first, but you know, it's kind of like. I don't know, actors, like, in a live-action movie, like, you, you just gotta deal with it, you know? Yeah. I mean, I don't mind it now, but... I'm a little bit weird about it, personally. Yeah. Like, I like a lot of voice actors, you know, like, Rob Paulson, I, I love whenever he's in anything, but, like, um, as far as, like, I, I prefer when there's a new actor involved for characters, because I like that, especially live-action, because I like to associate my face without having to think of another thing, because that, that takes me out of it sometimes. Mm-hmm. Really? Uh, it sometimes, not all the time, uh, but like that's actually me, that's actually why they keep the Star Wars casting like no one can be t- too famous mm-hmm. because they want you to be able to have it be its own world. Whereas mm-hmm. most Hollywood casting, you know, they don't really care about that. But like with Star Wars, it's like like in Rogue One, Felicity Jones isn't like that well known, you know, mm-hmm. so it works. I, I like that approach for me, at least. Um, like if I was going to make stuff, I would want unknown actors. Um, as far as voice actors go, it's a little bit different because visually you see the character. It's clearly that character and well, nothing else. Actually, it was hard for me to watch that X-Men show where the guy, um, I should not know his name and I always forget it. The guy who vo- voiced Spike in Cowboy Bebop when he oh, did Wolverine. Steve. Yeah. What? Steve Bloom. Yeah. Like I could not accept it. Like I had a really hard time. I could accept him as the Toonami guy, but I could, like, him as Wolverine, it was, like, way too jarring. I ended up only seeing, like, the first three, and I went, I just can't. Like, I thought he was good for Wolverine, but I just couldn't accept it. Like, it was weird. I think that voice actor Steve Bloom, he has the Guinness World Record for most voice acting roles ever, I believe. Hmm. Really? I think so. Wouldn't Mel Blanc have that over him? I would think so. Oh, Oh, you mean current? Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, Mel Blanc is Plus, dead. also, let me look that up. 
To be fair, C. Blum also has done a lot of anime and doing background characters. Mm-hmm. Like, he, it, when he does something, he doesn't just do one character. He usually does a handful. Yeah, because oh, okay. sometimes I'm watching a TV show and, like, I, I see that he appears, but for, like, one character that has, like, one line. And, like, I guess he was done for the day and <laughs> that was it. Oh, no, Pen, you're half right. It's for um, video game roles. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Anime and video game voice actor Steve Bloom um, posted to his Facebook page on Wednesday displaying his certificate from Guinness World Records, recognizing him as the most prolific video game actor, May 2012. I mean, like, he was in Scott Pilgrim, the animated, just little, like, oh, three-minute yeah. long video, just yeah. randomly as the teacher for no reason. Yeah, I, no- I noticed that. <laughs> like, in the new Justice League vs. Teen Titans, it's a video movie. He plays Lex Luthor for, like, one second, which th- he does not make a good Lex Luthor because it's too recognizable for me. But <laughs> he was there for a second, and that counts. Yeah, I guess I guess certain people, now that I've thought about it, um, there are, have been certain people that does bug me, but it those are rare exceptions, you know? Mm. Yeah. Though, I mean, uh, oh, like, for example, uh, the, the voice actress that does Mabel, uh, Kristen. It's Kristen Shaw. Uh, Shaw. Yeah. It's Kristen Shaw, yeah. Like, uh, she's a weird case where uh, after a while I get used to it, mm-hmm. but sometimes I do go, that's Mabel. Like, it, it constantly goes, it's Mabel's voice, or if I'm watching Gravity Falls, oh, it's uh, Louise. But it's it that one, it's really more about how well the character's written and how they phrase things. And, yeah. Um, how they go about that well yeah. i have a weird time with the guy who plays dipper when i see him like he's on this season of the i don't know if anyone watches girls but he's on the show girls mm. and when he talks like he was breaking up with someone in a scene i was like fucking dipper but it's not <laughs> dipper but it's like i can't anytime i see him in something the whole time my mind's going like wow dipper would never do that like i just like like he, to, to me he's always dipper doesn't matter what i'm watching so yeah because i don't know i was i remember watching like toy story 3 and christian shawl played a, a, a dinosaur there and was watching mm-hmm. a despicable me too and she, christian shawl is there and gravity falls and no she's i think there. that's Kristen wig is in no Kristen shawl she's in that i don't know really? anymore I, I don't know. okay i'm sorry I sorry know. i'm fucking this up sorry Nobody understand we can find out we have the Wikipedia. No. This. What is one of you? What? Where'd you get this? Seb? It's from Community. Oh, uh, of course. Uh, Chevy Chase's character uh, goes. I've seen the Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite way of phrasing it. I know, like, there's gonna be someone in the comments being like, "I really hate when Stev calls Wikipedia Wikipedia." Might have been better. Oh, I'll have to look out for that comment so I can thumbs it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jim, why do you hurt me? No, I was joking. Sorry. I know. I, just, I know. <laughs> I'll totally dislike it. Okay. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Moving on. All right. Next question. Uh, Backseat Fluffy says, question. Remember when Nolan said the N word? That's it? That's not a question. Well, I'm, I'm just like. By the way, it was Christian Shaw for Trixie. Yay. Let's what do you mean, Nick? So, yeah, fuck. Is that the only reason you put on that question on so I could say that? I get. I didn't know, think you'd actually say it again. Oh my god. Oh shut the fuck up. Well, now we're not we're not gonna play that NCAA the N N A double C P. Ah, oh, forget it. We're not playing it. You Are we playing in up. this? I said the N word, and you you're the one who fucked up, Jim. God damn. <laughs> NAACP, that's it. Yeah, we're not playing their convention now. We're not playing college basketball. No, that's the National Association of Colored People. Oh, okay, I thought that was for basketball. National College. No, that's NAACP. No, college basketball. No, that's the that's the NA. The N. I don't You're know. asking. I don't know anything about sports. This Tougher is the thread forty eight question. Do you guys get ever get in trouble for repeating something inappropriate, bad from an adult show slash cartoon, but had no idea why it was bad or why you got in trouble? For example, when I was younger, I once got in trouble for singing the Uncle Fucka song from the South Park movie. I remember the, doing the, stuff like that, N-word? but I don't remember specifically what, so I'm going to bow out. Sorry. When I was a kid, I used to say the word fucko when I was in, like, 
uh, first grade, and I thought it was a fish. I have something kind of similar to that, except I, I, I thought I made up a word, so I used it, and the word was skank. And that my one of my, my friends were like, Nolan, you didn't make that up. That's uh-huh. a real word. And I actually... Was, uh, and I was like, oh. I, um, I don't have a story about anything from a show, but when I was a kid... We used to go to the the beach uh, in Ocean City, Maryland, and they'd have all these this boardwalk shops with like inappropriate T-shirts. And I was like in fourth or fifth grade, and I was like obsessed with these T-shirts. And my parents were like, "Look, we'll let you buy one from the discount rack." And I was so excited, but they of course had to approve of it because most of them were like pretty, like they weren't even funny. They're just terrible. <laughs> and like somehow they let me buy this shirt. And like when I got home, my dad was like, why did you let him get that shirt? And the shirt said, um, <laughs> the less hair I have, the more head I get, which is which is like obviously. Yeah. Um, and I just thought it was a bald joke, but I'd wear it like all the time. And my parents would be like, no, you can't wear that outside. That's a night shirt. But I'd still try to do it because I thought it was so cool. But like I did not get it, it was a blowjob joke till I was like. I don't know, 10 years later, I went, oh. You finally realized it. it. Yeah, but I still wish I had that shirt. No. No. That could go with my OJ guilty, not guilty check one shirt. OJ stabbed first. (laughs) Hey, he was never convicted. (laughs) No, well, he didn't, but if he did, he had a way that he would do it if he did, you know? Oh, that book? Yeah. Oh, man. (laughs) Did that book come out? I don't think that it did. That came out, yeah, or some rips of it. I don't know. We talked about this on the podcast already. This is, this is uh, we're already doing flashbacks. <laughs> Wait, is this a clip or not? No, you decide. Uh, yeah, the people Stop. in the comments are like, are are they playing old episodes or are they just or, or is this a new thing and they just don't remember? Did we do it? If we did, here's how we would. They would know whether or not I was here and instead of it's Ken. I remember the time when Nolan said the N word. No. You fox. No. Okay. Shh. Okay. Ken, no. Go. No. Stop it, Ken. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, this is such a weird one. Wow. Remember the time we talked about clip shows? <laughs> yeah. Hey, remember? I remember really? as if it was. Yesterday. I thought you were going to say sandwiches. Yesterday. I remember as if it was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so, is this the end of the podcast? Our 50th podcast that we plan nothing on? I guess so. I can't believe I've been on for like 48 podcasts because I missed two, I'm pretty sure. I've been on 50 of them. I've been on... I don't, I don't know how many. When did you I came start? in on the 10th episode. You came in on the Milestone episode too. Yeah. Oh, really? But then I missed a few. It's probably like 30... Six. Yeah. Oh, just thirty six. I think I think it's thirty. I think. I think it's thirty six, probably. Damn. I'm not I'm not sure. Someone let me know in the comments below. You'll get nothing no. except to be that except person. the fact that you're you're a huge fan of our work and that's kinda creepy. Please stop. Oh no. no. I mean I'm Please fine with that. <laughs> I'm yeah, fine with it. it for the 50th want. anniversary, our only request is that you all stop watching. <laughs> well, they can still listen, though, so it's fine. Okay, please stop listening to Oh, shut up. Don't tell them that. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, Goodbye everybody. everybody. Play us out, Emily and Stephanie. For the 50th anniversary song. Hi. Goodbye. What do I... Hi, this was Jim. Bye. What do we sing? I'm sing, sing a song with the number 15 at you, idiot. Oh, boy. This will be fun. Song, sing the first song you sang, oh. but sing it different. We don't remember what it was. I think, oh, it was the Titanic theme. Oh, I remember. Oh, God, this is painful. So long, every pony. No. Oh. Follow me on Live Journal, please. Wait, do you still have a Live Journal? Yes. Oh, cool. Everyone uses it, right? See, I, I'm a dead journal person, so. Oh. Oh, Emily's into that. Dead Journal's so much cooler. It's like... Yeah, um, it's fucking edgy as shit. That's where I rant it, about how, how fucking awesome Invader Zim is and how they fucking took it off the schedule and that fucker Nick President Herb Chanel replaced it with episodes of Rocket Power. What the fuck? Shoobies. Isn't that something Rebecca Sugar did? Shh. Hey, it's the pizza party. Goodbye, everyone. everyone. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Day after day, your home life's a wreck. The powers that be just breathe down your neck. You get no respect, you, you get, get no, no relief. relief. You gotta speak up and yell out your piece. So, so back, back off your rules, rules, back off your time. Cause I'm sick of not living to stay alive. Leave me alone, I'm not asking a lot. That's all I want. That's all I want. How many times is it gonna take? Till someone around you hears what you say. You try being cool, you, you feel like a lie. You're played by the rules, now it's your turn to try. So back, back off your rules, back, back off your job, cause I'm sick of not living to stay alive. Leave me alone. 